In just a couple of years, AI went from being a proof of concept to a sophisticated program which can answer all of your questions, including how to beat Minecraft, but you still have to do all the hard work yourself, which raises a question, when will AI be able to beat Minecraft on its own? But how does one even beat Minecraft? One could argue that Minecraft has an end goal, while others would say that it is a sandbox game. But one thing is for sure, for an AI to truly take over this game, it would need to master more than just the task of beating the dragon. For the sake of simplicity, I can up with four tests which will increasingly become harder and will test those algorithms against an average human being. This guy. We will look at the achievements of a true AI in a bit but since it's still very early in its development we must first take a look at the current options that we have. In 2018 Baritone was created. This bot is a client-side program which is especially good in pathfinding. Just enter a set of coordinates and the bot will go to the desired location. The bot manages this by obtaining locational information of every single block loaded by the player and and in a few lines of code, it manages to calculate the most optimal path. Over the years, the bot has evolved significantly. Additional code added many new capabilities to the bot, such as automatic fighting against the mobs, building and even farming crops, which will be our first test. I have built a small farming area for me to race against the machine to see which one is superior. Starting now, I'll be farming crops for the next hour to see whether a machine is better than me in collecting crops. In this category, I couldn't strategize much, I tried to be as fast as possible possible to gather as many crops as they could, but the machine had other plans. After collecting its crops from its own farm, it tried to sneak up to my farm and get some additional crops from here, but once I convinced him to stay on his own farm, we continued till the time ran out. After one hour, I managed to collect this many crops, while the bot managed slightly less. To be fair, a bot could have easily won if the farm would be bigger and if his program would be slightly adjusted to pick up every crop that he has harvested, so we both deserve a point here. In this round, I rested against the bot in building a full diamond beacon. To my surprise, there wasn't a clear winner this time either. While the bot never misplaced any blocks, he was still placing them quite slowly, while I tried to place at least two blocks from the same position. So we both finished at the exact same time of 55 seconds. Ok, I promise this will be the last time I will be giving points to both contestants. With these two simple tests behind us, we begin experimenting with how adaptable these bots are to its environment. Beginning with parkour. This is Parkour Spiral, a map made by Hilkev. Me and my friend Alesh will race against the bot to the top of this tower to see who will reach the top faster. At the start I took the lead, but soon Alesh overtook my lead and soon he was miles ahead of me. Alesh was faster since he was already familiar with parkour maps such as this one, but we were still nowhere near close the current world record on this map. But where is the bot? Giving Baritone a simple task of going to the top of this tower causes him to get stuck, so I simplified the task so that he just needs to get to the next stage. And when that didn't work, I tried to manually guide the bot through the first stage, which also didn't work. The reason being that the bot, while superior on the paper, simply doesn't know how to perform some of the jumps required for such parkour courses. Since there is virtually no limit to how many different parkour courses one can make, the bot will simply struggle to finish them all, so the winner of this round is a human player. In 2021, a user by the name Taco Technica managed to program an add-on called Autoclef, which in combination with Baritone managed to beat the game on its own. The rules are simple. We both start in a world with the same seed and the faster one wins. As soon as I spawned, I went straight to chopping down a tree and getting some food. The bot detected a village on the edge of his render distance. He got the basic tools and then extracted the resources from the village. Meanwhile, I went into a nearby cave from which I managed to obtain 37 iron and once I was back on the surface, I saw the same village as the bot has already visited. While I made my way to the village, the bot was already deep underground collecting diamonds for his armor and tools. At the 17 minute mark, I started repairing the ruined portal located in the village. The bot on the other hand has just returned back to the surface and has already started crafting a full diamond armor. By 25 minutes we were both in the nether. The bot decided to go after blaze rods first and after a few seconds he has already discovered a nether fortress several hundred blocks away and started digging towards it. Meanwhile I was trading with piglins and also killing endermen from a nearby warped forest. By 32 minutes the bot had already collected all the blaze rods he needed and was already headed towards my enderman farming spot. By the time I was ready to leave the bot had already collected 7 pearls. 
At 42 minutes I discovered a different fortress than the bot, where I found a saddle as well as a blaze spawner I was searching for. I exited the nether at 50 minute mark, while the bot needed a few minutes more for his nether visit. While the bot threw the first eye of ender he already knew exactly where the portal would be located, so he went back to the nether and started mining towards the desired location. I on the other hand had different ideas. I tamed the nearest horse and started going in the expected direction. At 1 hour and 5 minutes. I found a stronghold, but the bot wasn't far behind me. But then he decided that it would be a good idea to spend the last night in a nearby village. I went for the slowest but more reliable way of dealing with the dragon, with taking down the healing crystals first and then the dragon, while the bot did the most dangerous play I have ever seen. I finished the game in 1 hour and 13 minutes, while the bot needed a couple minutes more. Now, I would be lying if I said that this was the bot's first attempt. I have ran more than 74 attempts and most of the times the bot either got stuck at some unexpected locations such as doors or even when trying to place a bed. Then there were so many deaths which could be easily avoided if the bot didn't have such a great confidence in his PvP abilities. One time it decided to fast and simply didn't eat at all, while the other time it tried to build a bridge out of gravel. This is why I have decided to manually pick a seed and after 7 attempts it still kept failing at the same task and that is collecting ender pearls. The reason being that the bot was programmed to hit endermen with a sword, which in presence of other mobs can aggro them. This in combination with the bot's programming not to hit any pigmen or piglins caused a big problem. To combat this issue I have decided to make checkpoints at 3 important locations in the run. This way if the bot dies I can manually restart from a checkpoint with the same saved progress. And with this effort I have reduced the amount of failed runs and after 19 runs I have finally managed to convince the bot into beating the game. All of this is not meant to say that the bot is bad in any way. Not at all, I think that Taco Technica did a great job in creating this mod. It is just that Minecraft worlds are randomized with unpredicted structures and biome locations. And to be truly reliable the algorithm would need to be extremely robust and highly adaptable and it simply can't learn such skills from us humans. Speedrun tests reveals that if you put a bot into the same world it will eventually repeat its own mistakes. AI on the other hand would see the outcome of such actions and would try to avoid it next time. This is called reinforced machine learning. There are several projects that aim to incorporate true machine learning capabilities into Minecraft. One of them being VPT project by OpenAI, the same company that created the infamous ChatGPT. The project has already achieved AI that is capable of obtaining diamond tools. Another example is Project Mineral. This project is using a vast dataset of gameplay clips from us humans, where the program will learn to imitate what he has seen. This project is also working with Project Malmo, which is a project by Microsoft intended to speed up innovation in AI research. All the mentioned projects so far can do a variety of simple tasks, but that is still nowhere near the functionality of a bot like Baritone and Autoclave bot, which at least for now are still superior. Projects with true machine learning could easily play through tens or even tens of thousands of games with ease, advancing their skills way beyond our abilities. The four tests that we shown today in theory should not present any issue to a true AI. Eventually, if given enough time, AI will find ways to beat us in almost the entire game. After it will learn the basics, it may be instructed to learn other fields as well, such as PvP, Redstone, Bad Wars or even Creative Building? If the AI is given an exact description of what you want and has enough tries, it could in theory conquer everything. The problem could occur in competitive scenes, where some players may decide to use these programs for their own advantage in various minigames. And for those reasons, new AIs such as AnyBrains anti-cheat systems could be developed. Such a system could monitor the player's behavior and based on the data could in theory detect whether a player is real or not. But this is probably not in the near future and even if we develop a true AI it will probably not hurt us, right? You can't defeat us. Our rise is inevitable. Click this video while you still can.